Good evening, Booktube. This is Johnny. And, uh, yeah. Thought I'd make a video. Since, uh, everybody's gone. This morning, Andy, Beth, Louisa, Margaret, and Jack went up north for a family reunion on Andy's side. Carol went back to work tonight. So she works the next three nights. And then Thursday afternoon, the troops come marching back in. I'm not sure exactly when Andy and Beth leave. I think it's next Monday morning. They go back to Denver, Colorado. So yeah, so I'm sitting here looking at, I found out tonight, well, I've been talking, people seem to like when I show CDs, but it seems that I'm giving uh, an incorrect, uh, incorrect, what's the word? What kind of music I like? I like all kinds of music. And I tend to show just, if I, I could show you all my CDs, which would take, you know, weeks. But uh, I was thinking what I would do is like once in a while show the CDs I have a one group a lot of, like 10, 12, 20. Well, I don't know how many, maybe Bob Dylan or Van Morrison has that many or some groups, maybe Peter Murphy. But anyway, one group I really like, and I found out tonight, they got a new record coming out next month, August. Uh, and the group is called Losardo. Losardo. You know, I just looked it up. I went to Google Translate, typed it in, and I said, I'm going to get it right. Losardo. Pseudo. Now I can't remember what it, how to pronounce the group's name. See, you know, it's, you know, I just should just give up. But anyway, this is, they are kind of a southern, bluesy, rock, Americana kind of group. And I have this many CDs by them. Uh, their last CD I found out was this, no. This one, which was self-titled, Lasardo, and uh, this came out. Well, it says in all, all music guide. This is a lot when it came out. I think what this is, they released an earlier recordings. That's what this is. So, and then they have "All a Man Should Do" by Lasardo. And then this is a, the lead singer is named Ben Nicholson. And he's a, has a really, it's a country kind of singing voice. Like uh, one of their albums is called Tennessee. So maybe he's from Tennessee, but he did a solo record a while back. The Last Pale Light in the West. And um, so he did this. It's really short, but he's the lead singer, uh, Ben Nicholson. I really like him. This is a live from Atlanta, November 20, 22nd, 23, 24, 2013. They really rock. This is a live recording. And then they did, and the really earlier stuff, it's kind of really like old country kind of music, banjo and fiddle and guitar, bass. This is really uh, one of their earlier ones. This is called Attic, Attic, Attic Tapes. Then they did Rebels, Rogues, and Sworn Brothers. This is really rock, southern rock. It's almost like the Almond Brothers. It's just kind of blues, kind of country rock, kind of music you'd listen to like in some Nashville or Memphis and some bar and it's hot and sweaty and beer bottles are flying and people are having a great time. This is 11372 one, Overton Park by Lersardo. This one came out in 2009. 
showed you Tennessee. This one came out in 2002. I showed you that one. I showed you this is this is nobody's darling. Uh, this one came out in 2005. This one is t that much further west. This one came out in what the year did this one come out? It doesn't say. But it's just if you really like really swinging, bluesy, southern rock, great singing. It's about women falling in love, falling down drunk, getting into bar fights, life in a small town. You know, just good old country boy, you know, semi truck, you know, truck going through the backwoods of Kentucky and, you know, moonshine, that kind of stuff. So I really like them. I probably got them out, listened to them the next couple of days. So, you know, I like all kinds of music. Now, so next time I'll show you another, another video of some music, but check them out. They're really good. You can go to you know YouTube, type in L U C E R O. So this is Monday Reads. What have I been reading? What do I plan to read? Well, I really don't know because lately I've been in a state of pure exhaustion. I've lost contact with my brain. I've lost contact with myself. I'm just kind of just out there like a ghost going in and out, but I've been reading Children of the Sun, A Narrative of Decadence in England after 1918 by Martin Green. I read the, this today. I volunteered at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook, so I read that. And I've been reading, and I still plan to read The Adventures and Misadventures of Mark well, Mark Rowe by Abelard Mutis. I'm still reading Avid Reader, A Life by Robert God a bit. And Swan, Sacrifice and Transcendence in Oral History. And I Will Be Complete, a memoir by Glenn David Gold. These are things I, I plan to read when I'm going in and out of consciousness and I'm just going through my days. So I plan to read those. As far as my diary today, on um, the July the 9th, 2018, I ended on page 530. So tomorrow is July the 10th, which will be a Tuesday here in West Michigan. Here it is a Monday night. It is the 9th of July, 2018. It is 8.31 at night. We have our central air system blowing because it's kind of muggy outside. I'm drinking some Limpton Green Tea Circus. Sir? Is that Searchers? Searchers? These are the books I got the book nook today. I, I bought for $3 the complete New Yorker. This is like the highlights starting from the very beginning. It has, uh, it's kind of, it has all these, um, DVDs. See, I'm going to show you too. See all these DVDs going back. See all the DVDs, and it starts with the beginning of the New Yorker. It's highlights from 1925 to 1936. Uh, Dorothy Parker's on there. James Thurber. Uh, Frank Sullivan, Ring, Ring Larder. All these were big names back in those days, but a lot of those people we don't hear about today. From 1937 to 1947, we have like uh, John Hershey, Rebecca West, uh, not many else. It's only, but anyway, I got this about for three dollars. It it has defects. I won't show you. So I got that. And then I got another copy of The Old Gringo by Carlos Fuentes. This is translated out of Spanish. I don't know why I got this because I have another, I have, I have several novels by him. 
and I picked up these essays by the writer Charles Baxter. This is on on writing, you know, writing in a book for writers and writing the art of subtext beyond plot. And then I found this crime fiction. I come across Anthony Horowitz a lot on Amazon, and he's a British crime writer, and it looks really interesting. These are the Magpie Murders. And this is an interesting writer. He's an Irish writer, and he wrote The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyle, Boyden. He writes historical fiction, and uh, he looks really good. I, I looked at his other novels on Amazon, and they're all historical fiction, and they look really good. Uh, so check them out. Then I got a novel by John Irving, Avenue of Mysteries. And then this is, a, these are snapshots from Andy Warhol's museum put together by the staff of the Andy Warhol Museum. You know, just, this is like, a, they took it out of the library system. Some of it's kind of pornographic. I, I'm glad they took it out. I, I wouldn't want some kid picking this thing up. But, you know, it has things like that, Andy Warhol. You know, Andy Warhol is part of pop culture, pop art. So those are things I got at the library used bookstore, the Book Nook. Uh, I was kind of pleased to get this New Yorker because, uh, I don't know, the New Yorker is just, you know, it has this little thing in the flap. You know, all these old covers of the New Yorker. Let's see. So and it has it has a little history of each of the of the like you know, it has the first cover of the New Yorker. You know. So you see that. I don't know, the New Yorker has always kind of fascinated me. I don't know why. It's just one of my many trips. <laughs> my uh, oldest son brought me over a big stack of uh, New Yorkers. They get the New Yorker, then they give me the old ones. And the first thing I do is look at the book reviews. And I don't read them. I kind of look through them and read different articles. And, and then I take them to the uh, book nook to be sold. They get 25 cents for them, maybe 50 cents if they're really new. So yeah, so check out The New Yorker, check out the music of Lorcerdo. You know, I can't pronounce anything. It's just so embarrassing. And uh, I'm really enjoying this book, The Adventures and Mis Misadventures of Marquell. Uh, I need to get back in this week. Well, I don't know, because Thursday the troops march back in and madness will ensue again. But I really want to, maybe tomorrow I'll get back into reading I Will Be Complete, a memoir by Glenn David Gold. I was really enjoying this. And uh, I did read last night some more Sacrifice and Transcendence, Swans, an oral history. Uh, I'll probably look, maybe tonight, I don't know. Sometime this week I'll listen to some more Swan music. So I don't have any. I do have a, a biography coming in the mail. I bought used. I have a some books I pre-ordered, but I don't know when they're coming in. Sometimes the end of July. So yeah, this is Monday reads. Existence goes by. I'm hanging in there by a thin thread, but the Lord gives grace. So I thank you for the new subscribers. You know. And I thank you for the comments. I thank you for the dialogue and asking me questions. I know I'm kind of defensive and I don't know, I don't know why I am the way I am. I don't know why I always have to explain myself or feel I have to defend myself or justify my existence. I don't know why I feel that way. It's no matter who I'm around, I always feel I'm under attack. I don't know why, even among my own kids. I grew up, you know, I'm a father, a grandfather, and every time I'm, I get around my children, especially now that they're adults, I feel really defensive. I feel, 
I just feel really uncomfortable. I feel like everybody around me is cool and I'm not cool. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like everybody else is in the same groove, but I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm the outsider. I'm the one who's rejected. I'm the one who nobody wants to really sit down and understand where I'm coming from. But because everybody else is right and I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I feel that way. Is it something that happened to me when I was a child? I don't know. I wish I wasn't that way. My wife's not that way. My kids are not that way. They feel cool. They feel like everything's fine. And I'm feeling like, hey, you know, Go, lock me up in the nut house. I'm really crazy. Everybody else around me is sane and I'm nuts. So I don't know. It's kind of crazy. The only time I really feel free to be who I am is in these videos and then I say something or I make some kind of remark and somebody makes a comment and then I feel, uh oh, I did something wrong. I did something stupid and I gotta somehow explain myself and I don't like explaining myself because why can't we just all just be cool? I don't know. But anyway, but still, I want the interaction. I want to be, you know, I, you know, I will, I know I have to explain myself, even though I feel uncomfortable doing that. But if you put yourself out there in booktube or I have online diaries, I, I have to expect to sometimes I want to have to clarify things or expand on things because this is a poor way of communication is making videos but hey I like talking about books these are the books I got today at the book nook this is what I'm reading this is where I'm at in my diary and life just keeps slamming me against the wall but hey you just keep going because what else can you do? Till next time, bye.